There are the frontal and zygomatic bones, the maxilla, the sphenoid bone, and the ethmoid bone. The frontal bone is a very large bone. The lower part of the frontal bone forms the beginning of the root of the nose, the upper part of the orbital margin, a small part of the temporal fossa, and a large part of the roof of the orbit. The frontal bone also forms most of the floor of the anterior cranial fossa. The part of the frontal bone near the midline is hollow. The hollow space is the frontal sinus, one of the paranasal sinuses, which we'll look at shortly. Next, we'll look at the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic bone forms the bony prominence of the cheek. It also forms the lower lateral part of the orbital margin and this part of the lateral orbital wall. The zygomatic bone extends backward to meet the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, forming the zygomatic arch. Now we'll move forward and look at the maxilla. Here's the maxilla. The right and left maxillae are joined together in the midline. On each side, the maxilla forms the lower medial part of the orbital margin and almost all of the floor of the orbit. The vertical part of the cleft is called the pterygomaxillary fissure. The horizontal part of the cleft is called the inferior orbital fissure. The inferior orbital fissure, here it is from in front, separates the floor of the orbit, formed by the maxilla, from the lateral wall that's formed by the sphenoid. The underside of the lesser wing forms this small but important part of the back of the orbit. The greater wing of the sphenoid forms the front wall and part of the floor of the middle cranial fossa. On the outside, the greater wing forms this part of the temporal and infratemporal fossae, and it also forms this large part of the lateral wall of the orbit. The greater wing and the lesser wing are joined here, but more medially they're separated by this triangular gap the superior orbital fissure, which forms a large opening between the orbit and the inside of the cranium. Here's the superior orbital fissure from the inside. We'll get a better look at it in a minute. This is the nasal bone. This is the lacrimal bone. The two thin nasal bones form just the upper part of the bridge of the nose. The structural supports for the projecting parts of the nose are made of cartilage, as we'll see later. The little lacrimal bone forms the most medial part of the inferior orbital margin. This opening between the lacrimal bone and the ethmoid bone is for the nasolacrimal duct, which takes tears from the corner of the eye to the nasal cavity. We'll look at three openings that pass forwards. Two openings that pass downwards. And one that, in spite of appearances, passes obliquely backwards. We'll start with the ones that pass forwards. This round opening, just in front of the anterior clinoid process, is the optic canal for the optic nerve. Lateral to it, this large triangular opening is the superior orbital fissure, which we've seen already. Numerous nerves and blood vessels pass through it into the orbit. Below and behind the medial end of the superior orbital fissure, this smaller round opening, the foramen rotundum, is for the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve. We'll put this pointer in the foramen rotundum and go round to the outside. Here's the superior orbital fissure again. Here, medial to it, is the optic canal. 
the foramen rotundum emerges not into the orbit, but into the pterygomaxillary fissure. 